Hi guys, I feel like I haven't done a sit down video in so long. It's only been a little over six weeks because that was my last rotation overview video. I cut my hair. I feel like it was very long and dead at the bottoms. So I cut it. It's a lot shorter than it was before. And I kind of miss my long hair, but it'll eventually grow back. And also I cut off just all the colored parts. So now I'm fully like black hair again. I finished my internal rotation and that's what I'm going to be covering today. So for my internal rotation, I was in a hospital in the city and I was lucky enough that Tiffany let me stay with her in her apartment um, just because I had to get to the hospital at 7 a.m. So I would take the train to the hospital and have to be there at 7 a.m. and that's when I would start rounding and essentially my day started with me looking up lab values on the patient that I was taking care of and I would write down their vitals, all their lab values, imaging, um, their assessment and plan, anything that was pertinent to their past medical history, as well as social history, family history, things like that, as well as their HPI. And the reason why I wrote down everything is just for myself. It helped me kind of organize my mind and how to present to the attending. Essentially what I would do is at the top, I would write down their HPI. So 45 year old female with past medical history of diabetes, um, type two, hypertension, blah, blah, blah. Presents with um, a syncable episode times um, like multiple syncable episodes times two weeks. Never had this issue before. How long did it happen? And just like any medications that they're on, any history of AFib, if they're on any Eliquis or blood thinners for that, things like that, that's all really important to their care because we need to know the person as a whole, what they're coming in with, what they're presenting with right now, and then how can we utilize that to treat them and make sure that they leave with the proper care. Okay, so after HPI, you go into overnight events and this is when you either ask the patient um, did anything happen overnight that you want to talk about or you can ask the nurse the overnight nurse did anything happened to this patient if the patient has like dementia or something they most likely won't remember so the nurse is someone that will be helpful to you and then also the um, person the resident or the doctor signing off from overnight they'll also be able to tell you some overnight events when you are not in the hospital. Um, so after HPI, you would go into ROS. So it's the subjective part. This is all the stuff that you ask the patient, like have you any fevers or chills, shortness of breath, heart palpitations, chest pain, things like that. And then two important things that I always ask with ROS are, are you having pain on urination and any change in your bowel movements or when was your last bowel movement? If they deny all of it, then that's what you say. If they say, yeah, like I've been having some chest pain, kind of radiates this way or that way, then that's what you would tell the attending. And then after ROS becomes the objective part. So there's vitals first, and this is all in the EMR. You can redo them if you want, but sometimes you're rounding so early that these patients are literally sleeping when you're going into their room. So I just like to look through the EMR to see if their vitals are okay. If they're abnormal, we might redo them, but if they're normal, we just take that for what it is. Then you do your physical exam. So you listen to their heart, you listen to their lungs, their abdomen, um, look for peripheral pulses. You also wanna make sure that their mucous membranes are moist. Um, ask them if they're ambulating. And then after physical exam is labs. So this is still part of the um, objective part. Labs, like I said with vitals, is also part of the EMR. One of the biggest things that was challenging for us as students was that labs wouldn't come back at a certain time or when we were supposed to round. So we would just say like labs values haven't come back yet, but we're looking for blank, 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 and blank. For labs, I think it's extremely useful to use the fishbone. Like it 
makes it a little bit more easier to read without having to write like sodium blank, potassium blank. It's just easier if you have the like fishbone. And I know that I remember when I first learned the fishbone in school, I thought that it was just too much. I was like, there's no way I'm just going to write sodium, potassium, blah, blah, blah. But after seeing all the patients that I did and drawing the fishbone every day, it's like stuck in my memory now. And I remember the fishbone for the electrolytes as well as the CBCs. Um, and then after labs, you have imaging. So this is where you will report any new x-rays, CT scans, MRIs, um, any ultrasounds as well. Um, just because it gives you a full picture and it helps you understand like what you're looking for. And also you have a radiologist to read the imaging for you, but it's also important to look at the reading um, or the imaging itself and to see if you can see what they're seeing as well. After imaging, there comes the um, assessment and plan part. So this is basically where you get to draw conclusions about everything you just presented and tell us what or tell the attending what you want to do for that patient. Assessment is where you essentially give a one-liner of what this patient's coming in for and then why they're admitted. And then your plan is when you would say like their first problem is that they have thrombocytopenia and so we are watching it, we're drawing daily CBCs and then we will repeat them if needed. You could also say like patient has anemia, hemoglobin was this yesterday, trending upward or trending downward today to this. And then, um, so your plan would be to monitor their H&H &H and then repeat or give blood products, transfuse if hemoglobin drops lower than seven, <clears throat> have active type in screen, things like that. So. It's just a way for you to kind of tell people like this is what the person has and then this is what you want to do. And a lot of the times you will also consult people for um, a lot of different reasons. So we consulted Hemonc a lot. We consulted Nephro, Cardio, Endocrinology, and they would give their own recommendations. So in the plan, we would say consulted Endocrinology, Appreciated Rex. Um, will continue, blah, 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 steroids and taper. For me, it was a learning curve because I didn't really know how um, all of this worked. This was essentially my first medicine notation because everything else was very specialized and I never had a general medicine rotation. And this was essentially what that was. So I learned a lot about the structure of a hospital as well as when you consult others um, and where like your line is so as internal medicine you are the primary care in the hospital and you take care of everything make sure the patient is stable but if they have a specific problem to a specific organ or system of the body you consult for further evaluation all right so that is essentially the full note or presentation that i would do every day I would present to the attending, they would give me their feedback. We would sometimes go back to talk to the patients um, after rounding to let them know like, this is what your plan is, this is what's happening, and let us know if you have any questions or concerns. And then that would basically be the end of rounding. So after rounding, we would go back to the residence room and this is the time that you get to yourself to write the notes. and. Essentially, that's what I did every day. I would round, go back to the residence room, write my note, and then sometimes I did one note depending on the patient. If they were really, really complicated, if there was a lot to kind of go through and sift through, um, but sometimes I would do three notes at a time. So it just really depends on how comfortable you are with writing the notes. Um, and I think this rotation is where I really fully got comfortable writing notes, I would be able to finish them a lot faster than I've done in the past. And I think that also goes to say that repetition is key to learning how to do that. 
So my hours for this rotation, like I said, I had to get to the hospital by 7 a.m. Um, by the time I was let out, it was about 2 or 3 o'clock. Um, it did vary on day to day because sometimes the residents would have to go somewhere else and they wouldn't even be on the floors. So I wasn't doing anything and they would just tell me to go home. But for the most part, that was how long I was in the hospital for. All right, so for procedures, I was expecting that I would be able to do more, but I think why I was not able to was just because a lot of these patients were hemonc based. I was put on a hemonc team for internal medicine and um, most of the patients that I saw had a new diagnosis of cancer or they already had cancer um, and they were coming in with another issue. And so a lot of these patients already had a port put into them for their chemo and um, a lot of just like products that we were either giving them or drawing blood could be done through the port. I've done a couple of venipunctures and one ABG on my internal rotation, but um, aside from that is very little else just because these patients had some sort of access and the nurses would just take from that rather than having to put an IV into them, which I don't think is a bad thing because I don't want to poke someone if they don't have to. At least I got to do a couple of things. And then I also was called down to the ER once with the resident to assist with the paracentesis, which was also very, very cool. I've just never seen someone have so much fluid in their belly like that. It was cool to see like all of that come out and they needed to kind of tap that fluid to get culture on it and then the rest of it would be managed by their own team. So some of the most used tools I've used in this rotation I would say are up to date and MD calc. These two things were super important because there were things that I've just never heard of before so up to date was like my best friend. MD calc was super important because in internal medicine there's a lot of calculating numbers, there's a lot of um, like fixing your calcium oh your corrected calcium for hypoalbuminemia and then there's also your corrected sodium for hyperglycemia and like stuff like that so a lot of this you can calculate on your own but md calc is really important and it just helps you with that it's a lot faster there's also calculating the ascbd score to start a statin my autonomy as a student was really good i think i was nervous to kind of go into the room at first because it was so early in the morning like i would literally round at 7 30 and these people were sleeping and i just felt so bad for disrupting them let alone the senior attending having to do so i mean the senior resident having to do so then the intern would do it and then me like that's three people coming in to disrupt your sleep just to ask you the same questions so if i got a chance to i would just go in with the resident and just listen in and if i had questions i would add on um but then there were times that the intern was like okay i'm gonna go see this patient you go see that one and then they would kind of we would tag team so if it was a patient that they already knew pretty well and like it was a pretty routine kind of thing to see them they would just let me go see them and then we would essentially come back together to discuss and if there was anything that was important that i thought was notable to discuss or was concerning to me i would bring it up and then if it was super concerning they would also go back and see them on their own but i think for me it helped me learn a lot because i got to ask everything that i wanted to and i wasn't just listening to someone else ask and it reminds me of an encounter that i had with a patient where i really just wanted to get to know her because this is the first time that i've ever seen her and she was coming in because i believe I forgot why she came in, but essentially she was telling me about her symptoms and then all of a sudden she said, I was told to tell you guys this, like if I ever saw it happening, but I feel like it's hard for me to like find my words. And then I was like, what do you mean by that? Like, um, there's a specific term she used where she said it was like backsliding and I didn't know what that meant and she described it as like her brain is working faster than her mouth so she's able to think of the words but just 
coming out she was having some issues and so in my head that's like a big thing for stroke aphasia is a big symptom and it kind of scared me a little bit so i did a couple of the um, neuro exam points just to make sure she wasn't having any focal deficits and then um, she said that her brain surgeon wanted her to tell others if that was ever happening because that's not a good sign. Um, after I spoke to her for a while, I went back to the residence and I said like, the patient I just saw, she's she looks well, but she just told me that she's having some trouble finding her words and um, that it was important to let her neurosurgeon know if this symptom ever happened because she had metastatic brain cancer and she had part of the tumor removed recently. And so they were also tapering her off steroids. And then um, he said to let them know if you ever got that symptom. And so she did let me know. What happened was that we didn't exactly know like her past case. We could read through her notes. Like first and foremost, as a new patient to us, we need to make sure you're not having a stroke. So we called a stroke code and then um, a bunch of people came in. She got a CT of her head as well as a bunch of other imaging. And she ended up not having a stroke. What ended up happening was that her brain was swelling from the tapering of the steroids. And so they needed to put her back on. And I think that was important just for her care. Um, and I think me taking the time to speak to her and because of that um she was able to tell me that she was feeling off that's really what i took away from that experience is that like you should take the time to talk to your patients and i really enjoyed a lot of patients that i saw i think i felt more comfortable speaking to them because i just was curious like why they were coming in and a lot of these people have so much things to say um, but they know that like a lot of doctors and a lot of PAs are super busy. So I think as a student, you have that time to sit there and like kind of listen to them. Um, and so just take that time to do that. I think internal medicine is just so broad and there's so much that you are not going to know that brushing up on things is just not going to be helpful in this case. I think just continue reading and continue educating yourself. Um, and like read journal articles read up to date if you don't understand something ask the resident if they don't know it look online um and a lot of patient care is very subjective to the providers that are taking care of them so one provider will want to do this but another one will want to do something else and so it's just important to ask people like why are you doing that if i learned this a certain way like it's not bad to question i think it's it's always a good thing because it shows that you're thinking and if you understand why other people are doing things you'll understand like why certain treatments are different and i think that's the beauty of medicine it's that everyone has a different way of approaching it that's essentially what i learned from this rotation it's that there's no set rule as to how you treat a single patient everyone is so different and all the treatments are different everyone responds to treatment differently so you need to kind of cater it to that patient and i i believe that this rotation really showed me that i never got bored i never thought that this rotation was so repetitive because every day i would come in and see a different thing and i think that was the beauty of internal medicine it's that everything is always going to be so different and you're not going to be seeing the same things every day so you're always learning and if that's something that you like then internal medicine is definitely for you so i overall will give this rotation a four out of a five i really liked that the things i was seeing was different i liked the team that i worked with they really did help me get stronger in my presentation and be more confident as a student. Um, what was tough though was that I'm back in the hospital setting and like I feel like I'm catching up or like I'm playing catch up because there's so much I don't know as a student. The residents also feel that way. Like they know more, but they also still feel like they don't know enough. And that's just something that I think everyone in the medical field is always gonna feel just because you're never going to know everything and things are always going to change. There's going to be new diseases. There's there's just new things all the time. That was like really hard for me to accept because I thought I knew a lot. And then I went to the hospital and I was 
I was just like, I know nothing. All right, so that's essentially the end of this video. I think I covered pretty much about everything that I wanted to. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. Bye.